good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sherry Bruski, composer, lecturer, instructor of the Honors Section of the Music 150 of the Library Arts, and a 2015 CESL faculty fellow. Welcome to the presentations of the semester projects of our Spring 2015 Honors Section. These are the products of their semester-long engagement with the city and citizens of East Hampton, Mass., with their particular task of researching the need for and creating models of wayfinding signage for the various districts of that city. These projects serve not only as academic and artistic goals, but are also being considered by our partner program as actual entries into that competition, which will continue for about two years. We wish our students the very best of luck. I'd like to thank our many constituents in this undertaking, my fellow colleagues on our Lively Arts team, including Mariana Ritchie and Donna Carpenter, Everyone at Commonwealth Honors College, including Interim Dean Daniel Gordon, and Executive Director Meredith Lynn, the staff of the Civic Engagement and Service Learning CESL Office, John Wright, Director, Carol Souls, Associate Director of CESL, and Professor Ellen Pater, Landscape Architecture and Regional Planning, Burns and Maxey, Coordinator of East Hampton City Arts Plus, our partner program, our videographer from East Hampton Media, at Birch. Our music and dance department, including Jeff Cox, department chair, and Julie Candler Hayes, Dean of Humanities and Fine Arts. Our own Fine Arts Center administration for promotion of this wonderful course, the Lively Arts. Our students, for who they are and their efforts throughout the semester. I'll miss you way too much over the break. Congratulations to them and to our graduating seniors. Among them. How many do we have? I know we have this. How many of you seniors are graduating? How many? Hands up, hands up. How many seniors are graduating? Well, the graduates. Yes, have a hand up now. And also, also to our, our honorary, honorary past honors students in this class who are coming to join us and their, and their friends who have brought them. I'll hand you over to them. I'll hand you over to them. Feel free to inquire about any aspect of your work. Thank you. So our location was no 180. <coughs> um, it's located on 180 Pleasant Street in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Um, the mill dates back to 1899, and it was originally home to West Boylston Manufacturing Company, which specialized in cloth production. Um, it utilized a large immigrant workforce, influencing the demographic of current residents and their ancestors. Um, currently, Mill 180 offers new opportunities for the community while maintaining its history. This was the first sketch we had, and that's what we came up with. So it changed a little bit. We put like another structure in the middle. Real measurements would be uh, like seven feet tall with three feet foot <laughs> propellers on the top, and um, the sign is 36 by 6. We based this model off of um, the poles <laughs> in front of the building and the colors and um, what they represented. Yellow um, represents history, green represents sustainable energy, Blue represents the river where Mill 180 is located, and red represents the current and new ideas coming to the mill. And so as far as what we're going to make this out of, um, the plan would be to make it out of steel because that gives the whole sculpture like a, a sense of timelessness and uh, it'll last for <coughs> pretty much indefinitely. And the uh, cost of the materials of labor, if you figure the steel will be about uh, $7.69, it's not that expensive. Um, the paint be a little more expensive, fifteen dollars, and then the labor. Uh, that's the expensive part. You have to find someone to weld it together, and uh, that'd be like a hundred dollars an hour per, depending on the welder. So this um, sculpture, it started out as a street sign, but we figured that we wanted to place something out by the street that would draw people's attention to the mill, and so we chose a large sculpture that would not obstruct the view of the mill because that is what people thought as character to the town of East Hampton. And we incorporated the colors on the mill building itself to bring the building and the sculpture together. And we spoke with multiple business owners and residents of the town that thought that mill was important to the character of the town. 
and they were across the large windows and the landscape. We chose to have these spaces and gaps in between the rods of steel so that the view would not be obstructed. And some of the people felt that people did not understand like what went on in the mill. So this sign would hopefully draw people in and let people know that it was a place of businesses and there's multiple restaurants. As far as personal growth goes, individually we all have our own experiences, but as a group, the thing that we decided to focus on or to, that we looked back on and saw as our period of growth was um, in creating an artistic project, we all bring in our own particular artistic focuses, but what's going to happen is this isn't going to be made just by us. It's going to be built by a particular artist, and they're undoubtedly going to have their own kind of personal investment, and they're going to do their own thing with it. So what we tried to do is we tried to create something that uh, was a baseline structure that they could embellish upon and further in their own ways, that kind of thing. So we decided to leave a lot of the artistic direction up to the personal sensibilities and artistic tastes of the person involved. Well, of course, add a little bit of little touch of humor, no 180, you've got the two propellers and 180 so but hopefully the artist will get a little kick out of that. But as far as the production, yeah, there it is. As far as the production of, uh, you know, it goes, we kind of, we grew in that, that sense that we had a, our design and as it's grown, or as we've gone over the semester, it's grown and changed a little bit, it's become a little bit more elaborate, but we want to keep it open and show the history behind it, not obstructing the view of the mill at all. Do we have questions? Does it include any questions? Yes, question. Uh, what do you call placing the signage? Either in the parking lot or out by the side of the road. Oh, yeah. How wide do you think it would be? How wide? Like about three feet? How tall is it going to be? Like seven, seven feet. feet. It would be like a nice, nice large, recognizable uh, piece that people could say, I'll oh, just go by the sculpture at uh, No One and then take a left. Okay. I'm Anthony Chan. I'm Zaha Wen. I'm Yusina Kang. I'm Ian Yang Chong. And we are Pulaski Park. <laughs> um, the history of Pulaski Park, so it was, it's considered the heart of East Hampton, not just location-wise, but also um, how people view it as. Um, it basically connects all of East Hampton together. Um, there's a gas bill in the middle, and that gas bill, there's events such as weddings, um, lighting, holidays, pumpkin carving throughout the years. And um, it was for a memorial of General Pulaski. And there is a inscription that says, in memory of General Casimir Pulaski, Revolutionary war hero and chief of American cavalry who gave his life for the freedom of our country. Um, so he basically immigrated from North America, and he was a reason. He was a person who basically changed um, the American warfare and basically won us the revolution or revolutionary war, as some people say. Um, he did save um, George Washington's life, and that's he's known for that as well. Based on the survey, Sherry sent us, and also the research we did on, on the internet, we figured out this are the description, these are the most accurate description of this happened. So, most people describe it as a small town, a community that is growing, it's a blend of blue color, and they have DIY artistic facilities, a uh, scrappy new town moving in a new direction, useful energy in a new income in a new town. A funky, already blue collar population. It is not far removed from its new town roots, but has a very vocal, younger artistic vibe. This could be a better target. The art has played a crucial role in this revitalization, and we have been fortunate to have folks in city government to have understand this and support the arts. So, this is one of the events that are, is taking place in Plastic Park, so Bear Fest. This was this happened in 2012. These are just some of the different bears that were featured in this survey. So we also have a video that's associated with this. Artists to enhance collaborations between the two, and we work to um, really enhance the creative economy in East Hampton. My name is Burns Maxey, and I'm with East Hampton City Arts Club, so I'm the coordinator here. The Bear Fest is a city-wide public art festival. 
that happens throughout East Hampton. We have 40 bears. They're small and big bears that were created by local artists. We've had a tremendous re response so far. I was talking to one local business owner who was saying that she saw 200 people a day looking at her bear inside of her, her space. We have the unveiling celebration and it really surpassed our, you know, what we thought was going to happen. We had over 3,000 people come into the city. Really transformed East Hampton into being a walkable city. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this was the interactive experience of the project. Um, these are some of the highlights from talking to people in, in, in East Hampton, um, which kind of gave us more of a feel rather than just having the quotes um, that were found otherwise. So they thought um, overall the most significant districts were um, historic Main Street District, uh, which is a downtown, and it features that um, the old town hall, which is being renovated currently, um, which I'm sure you guys are going to learn about later, and Mill 180, which these guys just talked about, um, with the apartments, uh, local businesses, restaurant. So uh, moving forward from that, a lot of people thought it was a great town, a hardworking town, a tight-knit town, up and coming, and artistic. So um, in East Hampton recent history, um, obviously you guys learned about the Bear Fest, and also the renovations that are taking place right now. Um, at the Old Town Hall, very important artistically, culturally. Um, the types of art that represent East Hampton, people thought that murals, which is something that um, happened recently, I believe, that new mural they have, um, sculptures, kind of like the bears, and just functional art. Um, I know people have talked about the bike racks that are also art, um, pieces of art. Um, and last, uh, recognizing one district from another, people kind of took this pretty literally, which was pretty good for our project, honestly. Um, they said, like, obviously signs um, separated districts, the art type of architecture and buildings, like time periods when buildings were built, and the people in different uh, districts of East Hampton all um, were kind of how they separated the, the different districts. So initially, in the very beginning of our process of thinking about signage, we wanted to do a literal, like, sign which was kind of like just like a giant stick in the ground with like signs that directed people to places. But kind of like based on the inspiration of like who we've talked to and also of the also the Excel file that we kind of got with all the quotes and opinions of how East Hampton is growing. We've kind of grown to have this. So now what you see over here, we're going to be having like a minimalist and also kind of like modernist cube art, which is going to be mostly just for the functionality of actually knowing like the whole area of East Hampton. So on the side, if you can see over there, we're going to be having like a map on both of these areas. It's going to be having like a UR here as well as some other pinpoints of all the other artistic areas. And in the front over here is this East Hampton. We're going to be trying to make a cast iron gate that's going to be inscribed with the word East Hampton. And inside of it, it's going to be very hollow. Now with the hollow aspect of the art art, is going to be allowing artists and also the whole community to, contrib to contribute to the actual sign of this. So you understand that we also have, um, I don't know if we talked about this, but there's a pumpkin fest as well, where the whole East Hampton community comes together to carve pumpkins, and it's a great time over in the gazebo and also in Pulaski Park. In addition, there's also Bear Fest as well. So we wanted to fit everything within our signage, and this kind of allows it. Within this hollow area, we're going to be allowing artists and community members to insert some of their, like, or their own art, and it's going to be just a whole addition to the East Hampton signage for Pulaski. And in terms of how we're going to be making it, the materials we're going to need, initially we wanted to make it with like sheet metal and like some other cast iron elements, but that's going to be a little bit too expensive. That ranged for prices of service and materials of over like $1,000. So we researched and also we looked into like Lowe's and Home Depot. We had some, we looked up, we researched that Severe weather pressure treated wood would actually be the most uh, plausible and practical and cheapest way of actually doing this. So there's a unit called board feed. I'm, I'm gonna go real nerd on this, but like um, the volume of the wood we'll need, we need like exactly around 27 feet. So the actual size of this, this is about 10 inches by 10, which is gonna be giving around like a 400 inch square. Um, we're actually gonna be wanting each side to be a length of three feet, about a yard. And this is gonna be about like this high. So it's going to be kind of cool. You can like have bikers and like walkers and also persons just coming over and just looking at the sign, just being like, oh, I'm here. Mill 180's just over there. Let's go walk over there. So it's kind of cool. 
And also they can look on the inside and they'll see either pumpkins or leaves based on the actual season. So all four seasons can be incorporated with this. It's like a blank canvas. And a blank canvas within art, it's amazing what we can do with it. So. Questions? Any questions? Also, some questions about the piece. Stand like that. That's where I know how it's going up. I forgot to stand. It's going to be duct tape. How, I mean, how would you um, make it stand? The... So, it will not be directly above ground, but we're going to be having a stand that's going to be inserted. So, this is going to be actually in depth into the ground. Like a little bit, maybe like a six inches, for instance. And from that, it will stabilize. And also, with the pressure treated wood, it wouldn't um, get mold or it would it wouldn't like decay, hopefully. So that it stand up and be like a forty five degree angle cube. Any other questions? Grace, did you want? Oh, um, so would the artist like take a corner and paint on it, like? And put it together, or how does that? Well, we're going for the maps on the sides, kind of would be inscribed, uh -huh. um, and then the the like community-based part would be like what's inside of it. So like um, he like he said the pumpkins carving, like he, people could put their pumpkins in there, or like flowers, things like that. Yep. So. Any questions? Great, thank you. the history of the area. The Manhan Rail Trail is located in the city of East Hampton and is six miles long. It is located on Union Street and bisects the site serving as a midpoint between the northern and southern approaches of Union Street. The trail continues into North Hampton and connects with trails in North Hampton. It allows users to access every part of East Hampton with limited difficulty. The area used to be a railroad and is now a bike path. The entire length of the Manhan Rail Trail is paved. It is mostly flat with a few dips and a gradual incline from Route 5 towards the center of East Hampton. The Manhan Rail Trail is a multi-use trail. Equipment used as mobility aids such as motorized wheelchairs are permitted. However, no unauthorized motor vehicles such as snow or recreational vehicles are allowed on the trail. On the trail, there is a mile marker system where there is a small green and white marker on a post or fence every mile. 
The trail is named after the Manhattan River, which runs parallel to the trail. It has served the community for eight years as the location for Daryl's race. So that's a little background on the history of the area. Um, these are some of our inspirations for coming up with the, like the sign and how we said go about it. The first one were some of the performances we saw, one in particular being the Nile Project. So we have a little, just a little clip to remind us of the Nile Project. because they work together to create unity uh, with like multiple countries and we felt that we wanted to kind of create unity not only in East Hampton with the people in East Hampton, East Hampton themselves but also with the surrounding areas of Northampton and Hadley and Amherst so we really wanted to kind of give that sense of unity and then um, the Nile Project also brought people together and the Manhattan Ramp Trail kind of runs it, a total of six miles, so it runs a good distance and it kind of brings people together, which is what we wanted to kind of portray in our sign um, and help create with our sign. But other performances we saw too, we found also kind of contributed and like changed our view on art. Our class discussions we also felt were a real um, inspiration to us, especially with the activist piece. So we put this one in particular in the um, Presley because the statue is meant to inspire change and we wanted to kind of inspire change in East Hampton by you know bringing positivity to the area with this this quote was like meant to make people happy that was like one of our goals of the quote so we wanted to inspire change just like this did so that was an influence on us so our biggest inspiration <laughs> undoubtedly was our professor Sherry Bootsky uh, without her it must be uh, without, her, <laughs> without her, we wouldn't have been able to do anything. Uh, she really like helped us open our minds and be creative. Uh, Sherry pushed us to think outside the box and constantly challenged us to think in ways we would not normally think. Uh, it was this way of thinking that created our signage. Uh, she helped uh, open our imaginations to run wild and think of great things. So thanks, Sherry. So we, uh, actually, we interviewed uh, a couple of people from East Hampton, uh, one of them being my friend uh, Kyle O'Connell. And uh, he said that he loves the bike path and he really enjoys using it. Um, it says, uh, I would like to see change in the city of East Hampton and I think the city could use color to bring a new sense of positive energy. Uh, he said he, like, he, he thinks it's a centerpiece of East Hampton, so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to the uh, rail trail as well. And we also took uh, notes from the survey and they all said something about Corky and bringing new color to East Hampton. So. so the main idea of our sign was that we have some sort of podium made of fiberglass wood, stainless steel, or bamboo. And in the area that we have, there were already sort of, there was already a park with other things in it, like uh, plastic made wood style benches and bike racks made of steel. However, like Group 2 said, the EAC already has some practice with fiberglass and the fiberglass bears, so we thought, we thought that might be a material they're already comfortable with. And the idea would be that we'd have some sort of podium sign where we could put in a sign like the one that we have right there, already in it. And um, the budget would be dependent on what material they use, but all in all it should only be um, 70 depending on what it's made out of. But the main point is that it shouldn't be over $200. And this is our little starter. And does anybody have any questions? Okay, so we were group five and we um, chose to attempt like, a wayfinding sign piece for our cottage street. And my name is Lauren Okamoto. Uh, Dan Esterbrook, Yonatan Kaufman. Chris Coe. Chris Dustin Estes. 
Okay, so really quick for some area history for East Hampton and then a little bit more specifically for the Cottage Street area. So um, recently, the whole community has been trying to revitalize the town through investment in the arts. Um, you may have heard some other groups mention um, events like Bear Fest, um, which is a competition amongst artists to decorate a bear sculpture. Um, in June of 2014, there was something called Culture Fest. So that was a street festival with um, thousands of people that ended up attending. That was very successful in drawing tourism to the community. Um, so as a result of an investment in the arts, we have an influx of artists coming in to, uh, due to the cheaper housing in comparison to Northampton. Um, actually, uh, in relation to that, one of the locations we chose to focus on was the art studios, which I'll talk about more later. Um, the town also has a monthly art walk where artists, performers, and musicians show their talents at venues around the city. And also, the city has been renovated with public funds recently, so it's already been mentioned, but like we have the creative bike rack. Okay, so a big goal of our signage was to point out um, areas of interest around the Cottage Street area. So the four landmarks we chose was Wilton Brook Town Hall, um, the Common Street Studios, and also the parking lot, which may not seem like um, a tourist attraction, but it's really important in terms of people getting there for transportation. So these are the key sites that visitors would be interested in. So yeah, we chose the parking lot as one because everyone just likes to park. Got to know where your car is. Um, Willingbrook, it's like a great place for activities like year round. They have uh, fishing, ice skating, sailing, kayaking, all kinds of trails. It's a beautiful place. Uh, the town hall is like you said, a center for art. And it's home to five different companies now. And uh, the Cottage Street Studios were once a mill. Um, and it's home to over 85 different artists. And they also have open studios semi-annually where the artists show off their work. So, um, Using the resident survey that uh, Brent and Maxie sent us, we went through and took some of the answers that related to people who thought that Cottage Street was one of the main attractions in East Hampton. Uh, a couple of quotes that we used were, uh, it's quirky, very artist friendly, a surprising and diverse mix of creative and working class, and creative working class people who have something of a can-do attitude. Uh, it's quaint, authentic, charming, and real. A uh, charming city where art is starting to make a home, and there's plenty of places to drink beer and such. East Hampton has the quaintness and beauty of a small town, but the business and liveliness of the city. The local government community not only appreciate art, business and ownership, engagement and responsibility within the community, but they encourage it through support for the school districts, the agriculture, environment, and the people who live there. And to look around or to navigate the town makes one wonder how it ever came to be the way it is. And that's part of the appeal for those who live here, who themselves are not easily categorized. Additionally, we also uh, went to East Hampton and took polls amongst uh, some of the East Hampton residents. Uh, we interviewed 26 residents uh, and asked two questions. Do you ever have trouble finding your way around? And if yes, uh, would signs, signs help that cause? I think around 16 people actually responded that no, they don't really have a problem <laughs> finding their way around, which is probably to be expected since they were locals. And there were 10 people who said that, uh, yeah, sometimes it's difficult finding my way around. Uh, nine of which responded that yes, signs would help them. Um, so this is a miniature version of the sculpture that we want to make. Uh, because of some people get lost and stuff, we wanted to um, have a wayfinding signage. Um, this is a uh, musician in a concho base. So the idea was um, because there's so much artistic uh, in the, it's very artistic community. We wanted to. Um, show that with the sculpture. Uh, so the real um, model would be six feet tall, uh, and the concha base would be eight feet tall and around three feet wide. Um, we're going to make the model out of um, copper wire, and the base is made out of oak. And what we plan to do is it's blank right now because we hope uh, that this will be a community project by having students maybe paint on it and uh, get everyone involved in it. 
So the location that we plan to have it on is the intersection between Cottage Street and um, Adams Street. And we wanted to have it directly on that triangle area, so right there. And it would be facing towards Cottage Street. Um, so the cost of the copper wire would be around 62, and then a primer <coughs> for the wood around 17. Um, <laughs> the the oak would be around 171 dollars, but the most expensive is the concrete, um, so that it will be planted in the ground. It's around 1,400, which is pretty pricey. Uh, so in total, <laughs> if we have a bunch of volunteers um, for the making of this. Uh, project, then we just have to buy the materials, which would be around a thousand and six hundred fifty dollars. Okay, so uh, for this uh, sculpture, we uh, took inspiration from all the different units that we uh, had in class this semester. Um, obviously, one of the major units that we looked at was our music section, uh, and a bunch of different lectures helped uh, provide inspiration. Uh, there was an experimental music section where Sal Mathia uh, played the contrabass, actually, and used the, uh, the PowerPoint slide and had all the trippy imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we talked about classical music, and contrabass has had a long and uh, storied history in that uh, musical genre. And it, it's also been used in jazz music. There was a contrabass player in Warren Wolf's band. And uh, we thought, just like in jazz, where uh, all these different people come together and they have their own ideas of art, but it kind of all mixes together. That's what we're looking for in East Hampton. And we also borrowed from our visual arts section. Uh, we thought it looked kind of like uh, Picasso's The Old Guitarist, uh, which is an example of modernism, and a little bit like the Quinnipiac sculpture, which is the sculpture at the front of the back, uh, which is an example of postmodernism. Uh, so for just a couple acknowledgments, we'd like to thank uh, those 26 East Hampton residents that we interviewed, as well as uh, the Lively Arts faculty in general, and particularly our professor, Sherry Muskie, and all of you for inspiring us. <laughs>